Hello and welcome back to another episode of Machine Spotlight, where today we're going to be shining the spotlight on the Dreadwing, another one of the brand new machines found in Horizon Forbidden West. The Dreadwing is essentially a gigantic bat. Its size places it between the Sunwing and the Stormbird. It is one of five flying machines in Horizon Forbidden West, which includes previous machines like the Glint Hawk and Stormbird, and new machines like the Sky Drifter and Sunwing. It is quite a rare creature with only one dedicated machine site on the entire map, as well as one unmarked machine site. The only Dreadwing machine site can be found on the map directly south of Latopolis and southwest of Cauldron Mu. Here, you can find a lone Dreadwing, likely hanging out under a freeway overpass. There are some Leap Lashers and Wide Moss to the northeast. While they are typically out of range to aggro, the Dreadwing can call on them for support during battle. The only other Dreadwing site is unmarked. You can find it on the map in the high mountains, north of Falls Edge and south of Skies Sentry. Here you will find a Dreadwing along with a Stormbird. The location is littered with environmental weapons that you can put to use, like elemental barrels and suspended logs. Now let's take a look at the data point for the Dreadwing. The Dreadwing, a level 26 combat heavyweight machine, a large and powerful flying combat machine. Its attacks include a range of disruptive status effects, making it a dangerous and tenacious enemy. It is weak versus fire damage, and strong versus frost, shock, and acid damage. The Dreadwing can be looted for resources like Metal Bite, Metal Shards, Braided Wire, Dreadwing Circulator, Large Machine Core, Dreadwing Primary Nerve, Volatile Sludge, Machine Muscle, Crystal Braiding, Metal Bone, Luminous Brainstem, and Sturdy Hard Plate. Next, let's review the Dreadwing's weak spots. Once again, it is important to note that the Dreadwing is weak versus fire, and strong versus acid, frost, and shock damage. The Noxious Container, similar to myself, acts as potent gas storage and ejects a noxious gas that prevents consumption of food or potions for a limited time. The Stamina Drain Container acts as potent liquid storage. You can destroy it to disable weapon stamina drain ability, or you can leave it intact to add loot to the carcass. The Sparker acts as shock storage. You can tear it off to collect the resource, or shoot with the well-placed shock arrow to detonate and temporarily stun the machine. The radar is a detection device and emits a pulse that reveals enemies including those in stealth and scrambles focus signals. The metal bite sack acts as metal bite storage. You can destroy it to disable acid attacks or leave intact to add loot to the carcass. The metal fangs are one of the Dreadwing's melee weapons. You can detach or destroy both fangs to significantly reduce damage from biting attacks and disable its leeching attack. The Damage Dampener Container acts as potent liquid storage. You can destroy it to disable damage dampening or leave it intact to add loot to the carcass. The Purge Water Canister acts as purge water storage. You can tear it off to collect the resource or shoot with the well-placed purge water arrow to detonate and cause the drenched state. The Stealth Generator is a cloaking device that allows the machine to become nearly invisible. Resource containers act as storage containers for valuable resources. Tear them off to collect their contents. The flash blinders are large, triangular appendages that produce blinding flashes to disorient enemies. Detach or destroy both to disable. The bomb launcher is a heavy weapon that can launch powerful salvos of bombs for a range of attacks. You can detach it and use it for yourself as well. Finally, the antenna serves as a signal transmitter used to call in machine reinforcements. Next, we'll take a look at the only other variant of the Dreadwing, the Apex Dreadwing. The Apex Dreadwing is a level 40 combat heavyweight machine 
a hunter-killer variant recognizable by black and gold armor plates and purple muscles. It has been modified to be significantly more resilient and deadly. It is weak versus plasma damage and strong versus fire, frost, and purge water damage. Killing an Apex Dreadwing, while difficult, can be quite worth it for acquiring loot. It has 100% drop rates for Metal Bite, Luminous Brainstem, Metal Shards, and Apex Dreadwing Hearts. You can also get Braided Wire, Large Machine Core, Dreadwing Circulator, Dreadwing Primary Nerf, Volatile Sludge, Machine Muscle, Metal Bone, Crystal Braiding, and Sturdy Hard Plate. Next, let's take a look at a Dreadwing in combat to study its range of attacks. Here you can see it using its stealth generator. It can launch a volley of bombs that detonate a few seconds after making impact. It can also launch acid bombs in quick succession. Here, it uses its claws for a swooping melee attack. On the ground, it can launch forward, plunging its metal fangs into its target. The Dreadwing sweeps its wide wings around, dealing damage to anything they impact. Here you can see it using its blinding flashers. If you can't dodge out of the way, they will temporarily obscure your vision. It uses its Metal Bite Sack to unleash a cloud of acid, dealing acid damage to anything in its wake. Studying the Dreadwing's range of attacks along with the weak points can help you make quick work of it in battle. The Dreadwing can be overridden once completing Cauldron Kappa and obtaining its overrides. The Dreadwing override will initially come corrupted so you will have to obtain some resources in order to craft the Uncorrupted Override. Now, I'll demonstrate overriding a Dreadwing in the wild. We are going to set it to aggressive.
Let's see how it fares against some wide maws and leap lashers. Combining its strong melee attacks and ranged bomb attacks, it makes short work of the Wide Maws and Leap Lashers. While the Dreadwing scarcity hinders its usefulness as an override, it can be quite fun to unleash it upon enemy machines. Finally, let's take a look at the Dreadwing's detachable weapon, the Bomb Launcher. The bomb launcher holds 20 rounds in total. You can neither launch the bombs individually or charge up to unleash a volley of six. That concludes this episode of Machine Spotlight, where we took a look at the Dreadwing. Tell me what you think about the Dreadwing in the comments. I personally love the addition of a larger flying machine with stealth capabilities like the Stalker. If you like this video, please press the like button and subscribe to my channel for more content. Tell me what you would like to see in the next episode of Machine Spotlight. I'm Noxious Asp. Thanks for watching.